out of here. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to Wario World. <laughs> what up? Welcome to episode 32 of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want. We try to find secrets and new discoveries to some of our favorite games. With that said, let's get going. So you probably noticed that this episode's gonna be a lot shorter. Ah, guys, I gotta do what I gotta do! Unfortunately, there just wasn't really a whole lot to find, honestly. But the bigger problem is that this game has a lot of culling. And while physically moving Wario to some of these areas circumvents some of these issues, it doesn't circumvent all of them, because the camera will lock at certain areas and the moon jump doesn't allow me to move infinitely. But the important thing to remember is that whether the episode is long or short, you the viewer get to see as much as we're allowed to see. So now we're taking a look at the opening sequence with the Black Jewel. And in this opening cutscene, you'll notice that the Black Jewel actually just springs to life. It shoots out tentacles, it gets an eyeball. That's the main villain of the game. However, if we take the camera inside of the Black Jewel, you can see that before it springs to life, you can find the eyeball and the tentacles resting inside, waiting to spring out. So one of the many unusual things about Warrior World is that enemies sometimes spawn from these weird egg sac type things. And as you can see, enemies spring out of them and you have to ask yourself, well, what's going on inside of it? Well, you don't really get to see much in terms of the production of it, but you do get to see that there's actually an interior to these spawn points. As you can see, all these colors and textures are unique to the inside alone. Ah, oh, looks like we spent a little too much time looking at that spawn point. But here's a good question. Where does that money bag come from? If we look the camera up before the money bag drops during this game over screen, we can actually see that the money bag is floating there. But what's even cooler is that if we choose not to continue before the money bag drops, the money bag will actually stay suspended in the screen above Wario once he's loaded back into the hub world. That's always funny to think about that there might be a money bag floating above your head at all times. Oh, and we're not even done here yet. Yeah, in the pause menu, for some reason, this mysterious money bag also exists. So this is a little bit of an odd detail, but interesting nonetheless. Whenever you open a door in Warrior World, there's a very bright blur that goes into the entrance. Now this is a particle effect. What's beyond that particle effect? Well, that's the strange part. You would think that they would just texture a black void so that it looks like you're walking into someplace, but it's not defined. But instead, every entranceway has a small stone room. Now folks, this is what the show Battery Break calls padding. It's not much, but it's something. As you can see on the left here, there's some decoration that's meant to be fenced off something or others, but you're not allowed to see exactly what's beyond the fence. If we turn the camera though, we can see it's a concave area of nothing. <laughs> It, it has its own textures, which is really cool, but obviously one has to ask themselves, why would you gate off nothing? And now we're checking out this antlion boss because, well, initially I was taking the camera under just to see what his whole body looked like. Of course, once I actually started fighting the boss, I understood that you could actually pick up his whole body and throw him. So that was kind of pointless, but it, it could still be salvaged. If only for the reason that you can see what happens when he submerges underground. And with nearly every video game, there's a 50-50 chance that the model will actually move through the ground or just generate to the next spot that they're supposed to be at. In this case, the boss just generates. Now, I actually thought this was really neat. Now, despite the fact that this game uses culling very liberally, and man, I am getting so tired of the word culling, you have no idea. It's like the bane of my existence. But what's really cool is that if we use the moon jump code and we jump way high into the air for this basement area of this level, you can actually see the top level that rests on top of it, which is proof that you're not loading into another area of the level. It all exists at once. But I gotta say, it makes you imagine what it could possibly look like if we weren't restricted to whatever Wario can see. Creepy angel baby boss in an abandoned warehouse. Trust me, it gets weirder. Anyways, what's really interesting about this particular area is that there's this whole environment in the backdrop that you're not really able to see because the camera can only go so high, but there's actually a staircase that goes all the way up and there's a platform at the very top. Now what's really frustrating about this is that if we use the moon jump code, we can find out that this environment can actually be walked on. It's solid ground, which is something you don't typically see in any backdrop area. So naturally, we want to explore this as much as possible. Here's the problem though. The moment that Wario touches any of these platforms, he gets warped back into the center of the stage. So for now, we're just going to look at as much as we can with the moon jump code. 
So now we're in the circus stage and there's clearly lions inside of a cage. And I wanted to look inside the cage to see if there was an actual lion in there. Well, when I took the camera in there, I found that there is the legs and torso that are supposed to come out of the cage. But unfortunately, there's no lion itself. That kind of makes sense. It's still very interesting to see that the body's hiding inside the box, much like the monster inside the Black Jewel did. Good lord, this game can get really creepy. Like, for example, this bootleg elf on a shelf boss has the most terrifying face I've ever seen. I personally have never played all the way through Warrior World, so when I was checking out this boss for the first time and I found this face underneath, I was freaked out. But this is the game's intention. At some point, this boss is supposed to release heads off of its body and show its true form, which is just fantastic nightmare fuel. Oh yeah, and then there's this guy. It was even worse. People on Twitter were telling me how terrified they were of this guy as a kid. I don't blame them. Like, Warrior World, what are you doing, buddy? Uh, anyways, we're looking at this particular boss fight because there's Aurora Borealis hanging above the clouds. Now, you can see one of them very, very briefly when the boss is introduced, but there's actually two of them above the stage, and they are an entity that is separate from the skybox. <laughs> Now here's a pig and a speedo fighting you in a volcano. And again, as much as I'd love to see this environment in full, it's still very, very impressive to see just what this area looks like zoomed out. Lots of great color composition, and just overall it was a very impressive looking environment to fight a boss in. So anyways, when I said I was going to do Warrior World on Twitter, this guy went absolutely nuts. <laughs> I guess he's just a really big fan of Wario World. Well, one of the things they asked for was to see a zoom out of Pecan Sands, and, uh, well, how could I say no to that? So, this is what Pecan Sands looks like when we got the culling issue. But, this request is what inspired me to get the moon jump code in the first place. And, when we take the giant leap, we can see the giant temple for what it really is. Hope you enjoyed Pyron Wheatley. Thanks for following me on Twitter. Anyways, that was Wario World. It was a little bit strange, but I'm not opposed to strange, so uh, it turned out to be a very fun episode. Um, this week, we're going to be doing Dark Souls 3, or <laughs> the game I will never give up on, Mortal Kombat 2011 <laughs> or Mortal Kombat 9. Please. <laughs> um, just giving them some fatalities, people. Fatalities. Yeah, Look at the backgrounds of the game, folks. Because <laughs> they just want to see me tortured every week. <laughs> Anyways. Torture. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want to see more videos, I got a whole playlist of that other is... episodes. So you guys should definitely check it out. And um, that's it. Oh, nope. There is one more thing that I wanted to mention. One more thing. Towards the end of the month. I'm going to be getting a large sum of money from this weird blow-up that I got from YouTube. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, by the way. Uh, my way of saying thanks, and also just in tune with the holiday season, I'm going to be giving away shirts that have the Boundary Break logo on them. So if you want a free t-shirt, uh, feel free to email me your address. I know that sounds sketchy, but trust me, I'm not going to do anything weird with it. Uh, my e email address is she says at yahoo.com. I'm going to be giving away 50 free shirts. Uh, just because I'm thankful, and um, honestly, it's more money than I honestly need. So, <laughs> I want to give it back. Alright guys, uh, thank you again so much for watching. I will see you guys hopefully next week, but it might take a little bit longer depending on which episode you choose. By the way, the Mortal Kombat 9 episode is going to be a lot quicker. Alright. <laughs> hint, cough, cough, hint. Hint. Alright, see you guys later. Adios, enjoy your swag. <laughs>